Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. Today I am going to be showing you and talking to you about McCall's 7660. Um, this is one of the patterns that they released as part of their fall. It had to have been fall. It definitely wasn't pre-fall and I don't think it was winter, but it's one of the newer patterns that they released. And it's basically just a loose fitting pullover top that has a lot of different variations to it. And I love patterns like this because it's like a one-stop shop for many different looks. And so I thought for this video and to properly like review it, I would try and make as many of the options as I could. So as you can see from the pattern, there are some versions with like a mock, I guess mock turtleneck, is that what it's called? Um, and then there is a v-neck version as well. And then there are a few different sleeve versions. Um, there is a long sleeve, um, and then there is this kind of like bubble sleeve. Um, and then I took it upon myself to create a third sleeve variation, which is the bubble sleeve without the bubble. And I also made this pattern into a gathered skirt dress, an elasticized waist dress, which is super simple and you can do to any top pattern that you have. And I'll explain a little bit more about how I did that whenever I show you the dress later on in the video. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the fit. Um, I thought that the bodice portion of the pattern was pretty spot on. Um, the bust fit really well. It's um, sort of loose, like it explains. Um, the hip um, is a little bit looser as well, which is great if you're someone pear-shaped like me and you need that extra room in the hip. Um, also, something that I don't find very often um, is a very generous sleeve. Um, I feel like the width of this sleeve is very roomy, um, so much so that I ended up taking mine in some. I mean, I don't have big arms. I don't ever have to do like full bicep adjustments or anything like that, but I also don't have chicken arms either. Um, normally sleeve patterns fit me pretty good, like right out of the gate without any alterations. And this one ended up being a little bit looser and a little bit big for me, I thought. Um, and I'll show you a couple of examples because I, I made one top that acted as my wearable muslin. That's the red one that I'm gonna show you later. And then the other two were after I made some alterations. So you might see some differences in the kind of shape of the sleeve there. Um, this is the top in case you're wondering why I'm like touching on it. It's because this is one of the versions that I made. Um, so yeah, in terms of fit, I think it's, you know, it's very easy to make it right out of the gate and be just fine or make little tweaks to it depending on your body type, whether you have a smaller arm or smaller waist or smaller hips. Um, I don't feel like this is one of those patterns that you're going to make and you know it'd be too small. If anything, you might consider making a size smaller, but just check the um, finished garment sizes and compare that to your sizes to see where you fall. But if you make the size that you always make in McCall's patterns, I think that you would be, you would find it to be a little bit more roomier than what you're used to, which could be nice for the winter time. You don't always want something like so skin tight on you in the winter. Um, okay, let's see the, um, so, okay, so the bubble sleeve. This is obviously like the design feature that this pattern was showcasing and none of the versions that I'm going to show you today have the bubble sleeve, but it's not because I didn't try. <laughs> I tried to make the bubble sleeve and I think that a couple things. One, because the sleeve is very, very roomy, um, this bubble sleeve ended up looking very large and overwhelming and also I found the sleeve in general to be very long. When I was making the bubble sleeve I wasn't factoring in any fit issues and I didn't make a muslin of it or anything. None of that. And when I finished it and put it on it was just very heavy 
and probably the fabric choice wasn't that great for that type of sleeve either so I ended up it was this fabric here what I ended up doing was just chopping it off at the elbow and making it like bicep length sleeves instead I had full intention of going back and trying to make the bubble sleeve again with the thinner arm making that thinner arm adjustment um, on the bubble portion of the sleeve as well and then shortening the whole sleeve on top of all of that but I do feel like fabric choice is very important too and I didn't feel confident that I had a great fabric choice for that particular sleeve um, the sleeve is a lot it's a bold design choice so I was thinking that solid fabric would be better but it can't be too too drapey because then the sleeve will just kind of like flop it had to have a little bit of structure to it and so for all those reasons I just never ended up making the bubble sleeve it is definitely something that I want to make and I think it looks super cute on the pattern cover just didn't make it around this time around but it will happen um the versions that I did make okay let's go through them I decided I would try and do like a date night version a weekend version and like a work appropriate version so here we go the first version is a date night version this is the first version I made the fabric is um not super stretchy it came from Joanne um it is kind of like a take on a rib knit kind of um, it does have like some texture to it and also the fabric has like it's not a solid red it has like little speckles of black in it which I thought was really pretty um, I ended up just making the collar out of the same fabric which is an option you always have this one um, does give you instructions on how to use rib knit if you'd rather do that but I didn't feel like this I wanted this to be a little bit dressier and so that's why I went for the collar in the self fabric um, I also made the um, like the regular hip length I didn't make the tunic version I made the shorter length but I did not add um, a band to the waist nor did I add a band to the wrists and that's simply because like I said I just wanted it to feel like a dressier blouse more so than a athletic um athleisure type of um sweater sweatshirt type of top um and then for the outfit I just paired it with an a-line leather skirt and some leather like fold over booties that I had and I thought it was really cute and just like really fun and flirty for date night um the next version of the top that I made this is for the weekend and this is the dress version that I made so I basically made the same exact version for date night except I did the band in ponty knit and the wristbands also I did add wristbands to this one and um, put it in ponty knit and I wanted to kind of do a contrast version um, where the bands were a different fabric than the main part of the garment because I did want to highlight them a little bit um, and then to add the skirt it was super simple you just take the you measure the width of the like wherever the top falls at your natural waistline measure that width um, cut a square of fabric that's like two two and a half times that width um, and then gather up the skirt attach it to the top and then um, make a little casing for the elastic and tighten the elastic to however tight your waist is and then you've got a you know elasticized waist um, dress I can do another video and show you exactly step by step if that's something that you're interested in just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to work on that for you guys um, but so yeah so I made that and just made it knee length um, and I just thought it was like a really cute thing just to kind of throw on um, for this outfit I put it with some knee-high suede boots um, but it's equally as cute with booties or even flats um, and I just feel like it's like a, like I said a really quick throw on go to weekend super cute little kind of like fall winter maybe spring um, dress that that is just quick and easy that was the whole point of it because nobody likes to fuss around on the weekend right um, and then the third version is for work and that's again what I'm wearing today 
and it is the mock neck version not the v-neck and um i just paired it in the for the outfit i paired it with some kind of high-waisted wide leg pants and some pointy toed booties and cute jewelry and was kind of out the door um i have worn this outfit to the office and got tons and tons of compliments i just love like a wide leg pant with a high neck just I don't know, the whole silhouette feels very chic to me. Um, the fabric for this work one um, also came from Joanne and it is seriously so soft. It's like a super lightweight sweater knit, but it's got like a fuzzy texture to it. I don't know, it just, it's very comfortable, very soft. Um, it's just, you know, really, really easy to wear. Um, so yeah, those are the three dresses or the three, um, versions of the top that I made. Um, one of them I made into a dress, but um, the three versions of the top that I made and they all, I feel like, stand apart from each other. Like I don't think you could wear the two of them back to back or all three of them back to back and anyone would know that they're the same style lines or the same pattern or a version of the same garment. I feel like they all look different and that was kind of the the whole point of me wanting to do a video like this was to show that you could take one pattern and really make different garments look completely different. And then just leave in the comments, um, let me know one thing that is on your sewing wish list. Something sewing related that you have on your wish list. Simple as that. So I really hope that you enjoyed the versions that I made and I hope that this inspires you to look at some of the patterns that you have and think of ways to make them more versatile and other ways to make a pattern you might have already made. So. With all that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon and goodbye.